Silat Yesharim. It's still, still chapter 11. Good to have everybody back here. Especially back from Baltimore. So we're talking about the concept of kosher. Which is very apropos because we're right before the summer. And summer, a lot of people, they go on vacations to exotic places. And it's sad. I know firsthand many people, their standards go down the drain. Some people, it becomes lower. Some people, it's like they're already playing. So it says, uh, according to the Torah, it's not only uh, two four-legged animals that are not kosher, but also like non-kosher birds of prey. You know that. Mm -hmm. Or like catfish. It's like... So he says, it's also, of course, you know, donkeys are not kosher and camels. And then four-legged, it's not only the species, also the Talmud tells us, but we know that the way that we slaughter the animal is obviously the difference between something that's kosher or treif. Right, nevela trefa or kasher, because you have to cut it with a knife and you have to cut the windpipe and the the esophagus, and sometimes the hair amount of the hair. See, the Torah is a very precise science. Sometimes the hair width is the difference between the shochet making it a kosher shechita or what? Non kosher. So it says, So it says it's so amazing that the hairbreadth, the width of a hair could be the ultimate difference between you, because you, you always have to cut the majority of these, both of these two pipes that the animal breathes and things from, right? So sometimes a hair width is the difference between kosher and not kosher, which is really astounding. So this that the Torah is like a nuclear and atomic science. Like the it says, if you have a brain in your head, <laughs> you'll realize that non-kosher is like a poison. Right? We we explained this last time, Elliot, but it's a very good mashal. If there was a one percent chance that in this cup of water, there was non-kosher, um, there was poison in it. Would you take the chance and eat it? Drink it? No. So the same thing has to be with kosher, because po non-kosher is poison to your soul. Veggie grill, and all these people, it's sad, I just, because I know so many people, they're kosher when they're in Baltimore and LA, but when they go to the vacation, their whole stand, they become kosher style. What the heck that that means, I don't know. You know, the Torah is not a salad bar. We have to be committed to Hashem and all, you know. So he says, So he says, even if you have a 1% chance that this is poison in you, you're going to stay away. Same thing with kosher. Because by the way, your soul is eternal. How are you going to be so sure you're going to do the right teshuvah to get this poison out of your soul? And also, we said last time, the worst ramification of eating non-kosher is timtum halev, the Gemara says. You know what that means? It causes your whole conscience to become clouded and dislike Torah. You know, a lot of these people, they have like nuclear proof concrete in their head is because they eat non-kosher. You tell them the most beautiful Torah ideas and spiritual ideas of God and love of Hashem and all these things. But they still don't. So he says, So he says, You have to understand that Mamish, Mamish, Mamish. It's poison to your heart and soul and your neshama. He's non kosher. And if there's a 1% chance, we don't do triangle K. We don't do K. We only do OU. We do Bet Yosef. He says, he says, anybody that wants to play games and be lenient with these things and go into gray zones and 
is just, he's, he's an imbecile, the Ramchal says. And that's what King Solomon, your namesake in chapter 23 in Mishlei says, He says, sometimes you have to put a knife to protect yourself because if you really care. So now he wants to talk about um, you also have to understand something. The Gra talks about this in his letter, Rav Elio of Vilna. He says that there's a lot of danger of sinning when you're in a crowd, when you're in a social circle. What are those sins? Honat devarim, saying uh, you know a nasty word to somebody and embarrassing him. You know, especially men. Sometimes you know boys will be boys. Some people have bad taste. And you know somebody really gets hurt because he 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 they they take they they say too much sharp words or they embarrass him or you give him bad advice. Um, you say rechilut, you say gossip, lashon hara. So he's saying this chapter in the Misrat Yesharim is nekiut. So it's like it's we're in a war, like we just said before. The Satan, you always have to know, like. If you're in different parts, for example, in Ukraine, you have to have a certain amount of gear. Because if it's freezing cold, you have to wear white camouflage, right? Instead of green, which is in the jungle. You have to know your, your war territory. Same thing here. The Ramchal is saying, our ultimate goal is to be holy and totally pure. Totally holy and totally pure like God, right? So when you're in a social setting, you have to know that, hey, it should be on your red light radar, hey. Sonar, it should be on your sonar, hey. Am I embarrassing somebody? Am I saying Lashon Hara here? Am I, you know, doing destructive things that is taking away from my purity in my closeness to God? You understand? Like you could cause, you could cause Sinat Chinam, right? Or when you're in a social circle, somebody abuses you, you want to abuse them back. That's what? That's the sin of taking revenge. Somebody doesn't believe you, then you're susceptible to the sin of swearing. And if it's not 100% true, it's swelling falsely, which is the Ten Commandments, right? Or you could uh, lie or make Chilul Hashem. So the Ramchal says, these are all these things that, well, if you're yourself, like Rabbi Nachman Abbas, doing Hit Bodenut in the middle of, uh, you know, the Yosemite uh, or uh, Zion. <laughs> Zion or Olympic National Park. There's a, there isn't a live human being within 100 miles of you. You know, some of these national parks are the side of states, you know. Mm -hmm. The Yosemite Valley, it's only like, it's actually 100 times bigger than that, the park. Mm -hmm. Some of these trails, there is a, there's, there's, there's more bears within the five mile radius of you than people. So are you going to do any of these sins of abusing anybody? There's nobody around to abuse the bear. I don't think you need to swear to the bear or lie to the bear or cross Chilul Hashem to the bear. And it says, who could really say that they're whole, totally pure from all these things? Because they come up a lot. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you want to show your big, big shot so you misrepresent and lie, right? Sometimes somebody gets you aggravated and then you get angry and then you curse them out, right? In a social setting, he says, you just have to be careful that you're pure from all these. And it, it, it requires a lot of work, right? So let's go to Hona'at Devarim. Hona'at Devarim b'chul l'avir v'nei chaberot davar shibishbenu. Let's say your friends about tshuva. Anything you say that causes the person to be embarrassed, like let's say your friend became a very religious Jew. Baruch Hashem, he went to Isha Torah, like our good friends are going to go, or Or Saneach, right? But then... This guy, before he was about tshuva, used to do some really like dirty or stuff that is very dishonorable for a religious Jew to do. So if, in, if you remind him of that, and is there any way of him denying it? No. Facts are facts. You can't change. That's, that's not good to cause him to become, you know, Re remind him his embarrassing acts. Like the Gemara says, if he's about you, he says, oh, remember you used to eat those pork McDonald's sandwiches? 
So it says the same thing. Let's say the guy's sick. You tell him, oh, you know why you deserve these? To get sick? Because it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the mistake that Eob's um, friends did it to him. That's not the right time to tell remind people of their sins because you're breaking his heart. You need to the Rambam actually says to the contrary. He says there's a there's a there's a sickness where somebody that does tshuva we should encourage him and be proud of him. Not try to attack him and abuse him and embarrass him and say, Oh, you right? We need to lift him up and make him better and better. Not weigh him down, right? And Say, oh, this used to be like this and this and this and break his heart. You know, that's just wrong. There's another case. Sometimes people like to be wise guys. And unfortunately, some people on YouTube have even get arrested. They try to do shtick, like scare people. So some, the Gemara says it's absolutely forbidden. Somebody's new in town. He, he's looking for... A grocery store. You say, oh, go to this address. And the guy sells tires. <laughs> That's Onad Devarin. You're misleading and misrepresenting. Um, and the Gemara says, it's worse to break, say abusive words to somebody. It's even then, right? There's two ways of abusing somebody. Either you steal his money, or you make him feel bad by t- saying embarrassing and nasty words to him. Which one is worse? The words. Because the money, if you give him back, he'll be okay with you. Let's say he sold you a fake Rolex watch and the guy calls you out on it. So you give him back the five, ten thousand dollars That's fine. But, you know, especially with women, I'm telling you. This is what I got to be part of our Ten Commandments series on that one. But anybody, some people are very sensitive, like me, myself. I know from my own kids. Sometimes you break somebody's heart. You tell them a sharp nasty word there's no guarantee till the day they die they're going to forgive you and forget it you know so it'd be wiser to to say you know and it's that's why it says you should fear from Hashem the whole shekane and it says it's 10 times worse if you do it you're, you're playing with your whole Allah if you do this in public because then you're embarrassing him in public which is like murder right and we know it says Hamal bin it says in Pirkei Avot chapter 3 which Mishnah 11. Somebody that does that, embarrasses and friends in, in public, has no place in the next world. And Rab, Rabbi Chista teaches us in the Gemara Baba Metziah, he says sometimes all the doors of heaven are closed, but the door of embarrassing somebody publicly, where, um, you know, the uh, when the guy cries out because he's in pain, Hashem... Even if the guy is not a Sadiq, he's a Rasha, Hashem is going to hear his prayer and take revenge from who? You, God forbid, that broke his heart. Right? And the Gemara there continues, page 59 in Baba Metziah. It says, It says, Everybody Hashem punishes through proxies, through angels, except somebody that's heartbroken. That Hashem punishes them directly. And then the Gemara there continues, Shlosha, and this is so bad because we live in a culture where a lot of times people are very, very abusive and they're just, they think it's fun to make fun of each other. Shlosha in par good It says there's three people that the, uh, you know, God forbid the Gemara says that there's kind of like a metal barrier between us and Hashem. But he says, the person that's been heartbroken, there is no barrier. His prayer, since they're coming from a broken heart, goes straight to Hashem. Even if the guy's sinning, even if the guy didn't put tefillin, you shouldn't embarrass him. So for sure, for just, uh, it's not a game to, 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 to destroy people's um, emotions and abuse them, right? It says, It says, Right? We have a... The Chazonish, by the way, says a lot... Of, it's, it's, it's few and far between people that know how to do the mitzvah of... I just saw this from Rav Desla, the mitzvah of rebuking, right? If you see another Jew sinning, you have to rebuke him and reprimand him. But 
The Chazon Ish already writes, it's very few people that know how to do it appropriately. Even then you shouldn't call him a sinner. Because you have to make him, not break him. Is there any point in breaking down people? I once, Rav Dasar said actually, most of the time, even, even uh, Sadiq people, they, they, they don't like to hear to Musar, right? It reflects off. The Gemara there says, you can't make his head, face become red if you want to give him, reprimand him and rebuke him. So he says we have to be super... Guys, by the way, if you look at Narizal, by the way, Kabbalistically, it's a scary thing. It says most people, the reason they become Gilgul is because, because of this type of stuff. Because if, if the guy didn't forgive you, then you're going to have to become reincarnated. He's going to have to become reincarnated. And then what's going to have to happen? God, God is going to have to make it straight. Things that are between you and Hashem, like not keeping... Okay, Shabbat is like a cardinal sin. It's a very bad thing. But like other stuff that's between you and Hashem, Hashem could send you to Gehinom. But if it's between you and the other person, right? That's why the Gra, Gra writes, like let's say somebody stole from you money. It's best that you forgive it because both you and him are going to have to come back. And it's a big punishment to come back in this world. You know? People think it's like a funny thing, this whole thing of Gilgulim. But the body, the Neshama, would rather bask in the glory of Hashem, which is God willing, going to lead me to my next year. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Until we do it next week, thank you.